the first position on the wave of wakefulness, if you imagine just a kind of large wave, the first position is called the initial glimpse. And this is basically uh, describing the initial experience of emptiness, of having an experience of unquantifiable emptiness, of something that's not possible to, to describe or uh, to define. But of course, that's weird, right? Like the mind doesn't like necessarily like that, the rational mind, the thinking mind. Like, give me a little bit more. Okay, so I'm going to give you a little more here to hang your concepts on. Uh, so this is a description of this initial glimpse. And, and another way of talking about what we're experiencing in the initial glimpse from a Buddhist standpoint is nirvana. We're experiencing nirvana, the unconditioned. Here's Bill Hamilton, who's a teacher of Kenneth Folk's, um, teacher of my teacher. He says, nirvana is an experience of the unconditioned, which defies any description. Any description of nirvana is not a description of nirvana. And that's the most that can be said about nirvana. There are no reference points in nirvana on which to base a description. So here Bill's describing what this initial glimpse is like, the actual experience of nirvana. Typically, though not always, this happens uh, at the end of a journey, at the end of a long journey, uh, in which one has finally let go enough for there to be this sort of moment of grace. Baker Roshi, the first American Zen teachers, student of Suzuki Roshi's, he said, you know, enlightenment's an accident, but meditation makes you more accident prone. So this is what can happen. We can have an experience of nirvana. But what is it? Again, here's another perspective. This from from the Zen tradition, from Bodhidharma, the, the legendary figure who is most responsible for bringing Buddhism to China and Japan, ultimately. He says, when the mind reaches nirvana, you don't see nirvana because the mind is nirvana. If you see nirvana somewhere outside the mind, you're deluding yourself. So again, it's a different way of describing, uh, but sim something similar, right? You don't see nirvana. It just, it's not an experience, like a normal experience. And here he goes further. He said, the mind is nirvana. This is the non-dual part, uh, the non-dual interpretation of nirvana. The mind, is itself nirvana. If you see nirvana somewhere outside of the mind, where how are you going to see something outside of the mind? <laughs> this is a really good question. Is there anything that you could experience outside of the mind, outside of, of your own experience? Of, I mean, by definition, no. So if you see if you see it somewhere outside your of your own mind, you're deluding yourself. Okay. So this is the initial glimpse. In the early Buddhist tradition, in their map called the stages of enlightenment, this is the this corresponds with the first stage of enlightenment. This is the the stream entry, as it's called. So this is the beginning of the wave of wakefulness. This is the beginning of the process of waking up. We have to first have this experience of of nirvana or emptiness as a a reference point, which again, it's the experience itself and has no reference point we, point so we need this reference point of referencelessness in order to begin the journey of awakening otherwise we just think i am this person i am the story i am this you know history like we believe our thoughts we have to have an experience of no thought of there of, of really seeing through concepts or concepts not applying mm -hmm. to begin to go through the journey um so the initial glimpse is the start of the path for, from the point of view of this map. 